Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Banter Blitz here on ICC. I'm your host for this evening, uh, Grandmaster David Smerden from Australia. Today, coming to you from my couch in Amsterdam, where I am stuck maroon because, believe it or not, one hour ago, I sprained my ankle. So usually I try to dress a little bit nicer <laughs> for you guys on our special nights together, but... Tonight, unfortunately, uh, I have not been able to move for the last hour. You can't see it, but I got my leg propped up, all strapped up, and uh, yeah, I'm playing with the mouse on the couch. But my ankle injury is not going to stop the chest, so get ready. If you want to get in the queue to match me, and there's already heaps in the queue, um, the instructions are all there in the Simul channel. Um, I, I won't try and read them out. That's not going to work so well, but you can, you can see them there. Leon's typing them. So do, do the match Smurfo stuff. Get in the line and get ready to go. We're already up and running, so uh, if you're following along on Twitch, uh, you should be able to see the video. Um, there's other ways also you can just uh, watch the games that are going on, but you won't get to see my pretty face as we go through. So first game's up, playing against an American, Flaneur68. He's the first to play crippled Smurfo tonight. And we're starting off uh, with a uh, nice, easy E6 Sicilian. Don't you guys take it easy on me just because I'm injured. Because remember, there's a uh, good chance to pick up some free ICC months of membership. I hope. I hope that's still going. I'm sure I'll find out if it's not. But uh, if you beat me, uh, there's ICC. Uh, usually get some free months of membership and uh, regular... Uh, listener-ins to the banter blitz that uh, I conduct will know that I am quite susceptible for a loss or two as we go through. So uh, good chances to get in the queue. Every now and then I go a little bit crazy uh, in the games and uh, pop, uh, pop a loss or two. So uh, a couple of chances there. All right, so we've transposed from a 2E6 Sicilian into a C3 Sicilian in the first game up against Flaneur. This is something that I have dozens and dozens of times so I have no excuse for not knowing the theory here and uh, hopefully if he plays bishop e7 we'll go down the main line and uh, uh, the main line has a special place in my heart oh he has okay this is good so now he's got a castle and I'll play knight c3 the main line has a special place in my heart because uh, I play a particular pawn sacrifice that uh, I basically pioneered, and uh, it has since become, uh, well, known as the Smurfo, well, not Smurfo, the Smurden variation uh, in this particular opening. So it's after, in this position, D takes E5, D takes E5. Queen A5 is the best move for black here. Uh, let's see if uh, Flano 68 knows his theory. The idea is that if white plays what he wants to play, which is Queen E4, black plays Queen A4, pinning the bishop on c4, try to swap off the queens. That's what he's done. Excellent. Uh, so queen e4 is only good enough for a draw here. Uh, also, my move rook b1 is also good enough for a draw, the Smurden variation. However, uh, black needs to know a little bit what he's doing. So I expect Flano probably going to have a little bit of a think here because probably he's not used to this move rook b1. He's played rook d8, which is uh, quite a good move. Uh, Taking the pawn on c3 was actually recommended by a couple of strong GMs in various beating the anti-Sicilian books, uh, Rogozenko being one. But rook d8 is better with the idea exactly what's happened here to play a uh, queen takes c3 after the queen's gone to e4. So I have to say, so far, uh, Flaneur doing everything right. Uh, what's going on? Why, why have I got... I have to say, in addition to a brand new ankle injury, I also have a brand new internet connection. Uh, as I've moved into a new apartment, the internet I'm currently sharing from the neighbors upstairs. And uh, don't worry, guys, I am going to get some new internet pretty soon. But for the moment, I have to be honest, it's a little bit dodgy. So we're going to see how we get on uh, tonight. But uh, please forgive me if the internet is not quite uh, up to speed. All right. Uh, so far, so good. I have to say, Flano playing excellently so far. No, uh, I can't fault false it. Uh, I have a, quite a difficult decision here. Question is, where should my bishop go? I've already given up one pawn. I'm not particularly happy about 
the movie should be fire. I feel like I've got some pretty good compensation here. Got the rooks on the B and C file. Uh, Black still got some problems with the Queenside development, but Flano's played. He's played this pretty well, uh, so he doesn't seem to be in any real danger at the moment. It's a good move there, kicking my bishop. Can't quite make the move uh, bishop b6 work. I wonder about the move bishop a4. Then if b5, I can snap off the rook, but there might be bishop d7. Then I have bishop c2. Tough decision. On the other hand, if I go back to e2, he might take another pawn. Oh, let's do that. Bishop back to e2. I've got a small time advantage. Uh, and now I actually wanted to provoke the move a6 so that I could have access to the b6 square. You can see now I'm threatening, well, threatening bishop b6. I don't really know how much it does. But it's an extra square, and I like extra squares. This is one of... Oh, he's going for bishop d7... Yeah, it should be okay. I thought that I would then be able to get away with bishop d3, but on a second look, it doesn't look like bishop d3 is really doing too much. i got to say my opponent's played this pretty well. I can win back a pawn, but I don't really care so much about one measly pawn. I really want to play knight g5. That's the move that... I really want to get out. Just don't know if it's any good. Okay, let's try it out. Mm, this could be a bad move or it could be a very good move. I guess we'll find out soon. Is there really no way to do pre-move on ICC for Mac? Usually it wouldn't be on my Mac, but if you recall, I can't actually move, so I'm stuck with the computer that was in front of me at the time. But it appears that I can't, I can't pre-move, which is a bit of a bummer. I mean, that's not a very good excuse, of course, but uh, still, I would like to have it. Now, I can play rook takes c6 here. I'm going to go with queen to g4, try and get something happening over there. Man, this lag is killing me on the clock here. I know, I know I'm making all these excuses, and I haven't even got myself in big trouble yet, but I'm, I'm not making these things up, really. None of them should affect my chess, of course. All right, so... He's gone for rook d7. It allows bishop f6. Gone back with the queen. Excellent play, I have to say. Really impressed here with the way that uh, Flavino has been playing this. Running a little low on time. He's got to be careful. Is he going to go for king h8? He's gone for king h8. It looks a tiny bit risky, but it's probably okay. And now, can I sacrifice? That's the big question. Oh, it's so tempting. I just can't seem to make it work, so I've got to go for an, an ignoble retreat. Not the move I wanted to play. It felt like I should have been able to sacrifice there, but I didn't have enough time to work it out. Is he going to go for h6? Oh, that would be brave. No, he's gone for b5 instead. I guess he wants the c4 square. f5. Slightly unexpected. Oh, he's got pre-move. Of course he's got pre-move. Oh, that was a bad move. Now I'm probably going to have to trade queens. That's definitely not what I wanted to do. Oh, I really want to pre-move. Why can't I pre-move? Hey, What's happening to my clock? Mm, this is killing me. This is killing me. I tell you what, when you're used to pre-move, I know, I know I'm complaining too much, but still. It's just something I'm not used to. Going back and forward here. I don't know why. Pop the pawn. Don't know if that's going to be so important, though. He's running with the king. Oh, why didn't I play rook g3 check? 
could have resigned if I played Rook G3 check, but I totally missed it. I'm given a second chance, fortunately. Oh! <laughs> I felt the checkmate in one. Oh, my God. Good thing I came up with all those excuses. Wow. You know what happened last time I played as well? In the last game, I fell for checkmate in one. I think it was the last game, which is unbelievable. And now this is the second time I've fallen for checkmate in one. This doesn't usually happen to me. I tell you what. I'm... Uh, well, congratulations to Flaneur. I don't know what happened there. I got so suckered in by this Rook G3 check that I should have played the move before, and then, pow, fell for it again. Well, guys, it's looking like this is the night to play me, especially uh, if you want a good chance to beat me. Uh, the gods are conspiring in your favor. Um, Flaneur, nothing, uh, I don't mean in any way to detract from your performance. You played an excellent game, as when you go back and go through the commentary, uh, from the video that will be put up afterwards, you'll see that I was complimenting you the whole way through. I thought you played excellently. Okay. Lord uh, Kinbote, uh, we have played before, I do believe, from the UK. That's already a bad sign. I'm playing someone from the UK after the uh, ridiculous Ashes uh, cricket test that went on today. Just another piece of bad luck that's gone my way. I guess listeners can probably tell I'm not having the best of days. But uh, wear it with a smile, I always say. If anyone does know how to do pre-move, though, and I see for Max, please tell me. Um, <laughs> because I would really like to get that working. There must be a way, right? Okay, looks like Lord Kenobi's going for a bit of a think. That might give me a chance here to go for preferences. Where's pre-move? Oh, all I have to do is click Enable Pre-Moves. Can you believe it? Oh, man, I'm so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. Well, then, I have no excuse now. Congratulations, Flano 68 What an excellent game. Excellent game. Uh, things were going a little bit downhill for you at the end, but you stuck with there and you took the chances when they came your way. Okay, Lord Kimbote, we are in a mainline dragon, but Lord Kimbote seems to not be entirely aware of... Uh, of the theory here. Um, probably he's working out whether or not he can win a pawn on d5, and indeed he can. However, it's well known in the dragon that many pawn sacrifices uh, give black excellent compensation, and this is indeed one of them. So let's see what happens. A knight takes c6 would be the way to win the pawn. Um, it's not considered the best move. The best move is generally considered to be bishop to d4 here. Uh, but he's gone for the pawn win. Okay, so this is going to be exciting because we don't often see this uh, anymore these days. The key move here is this move, excuse me, this move queen c7. Uh, the idea being that you can take the rook, but after bishop to f5, you're going to end up in a situation with a uh, queen for two rooks and the black queen and two bishops are going to continue the attack on the king. So, in general, the best move uh, is considered to be... Maybe I should wait before I tell you, just in case Lord Kimbote is also listening to this broadcast. It's consi considered to be queen to c5. Uh, queen to c5 is uh, not what was played, but uh, that's considered to be the best. Now... Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do now. I guess bishop e6 must be a good move. But uh, but now there's the option to play. Indeed he has. Queen to c5. And after queen to b7, you can probably play queen to b5, offering a draw. Uh, and after my last game, it would seem that I should try and take every half point that I can. But I'm not going to. So let's see. Uh, it doesn't matter. He hasn't gone for it himself. Uh for an interesting uh, move b3. I'm a little bit worried about white's king side here because this extra pawn you can see uh, doesn't really count for much when the kings are castled on both sides and the attacks are supposed to be raging. White's attack hasn't even got started here and now there's these huge dark square weaknesses around the king. So that's probably a good move that he's played there. Queen to a5, I, I don't mind that one at all, but the question is whether or not in the long run he's going to be able to uh, hold the position together. So let's see. So if I play queen c3, uh, 
three, he might try and trick me here with uh, bishop to a6 would be an interesting move. But I would counter that uh, not by taking the queen, but by playing queen to c6. Instead, he's gone for queen to a3. He's setting up for this move queen to a6 at some point. Uh, so at some point, I should expect that, but uh, not quite yet. Now, I'm going to go bishop to... Well, I don't really want to go bishop to b4. I love my queen on that diagonal. I'll tell you what, he's also threatening this bishop to e4 idea. It's tough to know exactly what I should do here. All right, I'm going to go for queen to c7, which looks like a little bit of a cowardly move, but it's got some ideas. I really want to play a5 on the next move. I still have the option of playing a5, but now I kind of kind of changed my mind about that. I think I might I might bring this bishop back out of trouble. Put that guy maybe on f6. Now, queen to a5 looks like a very good move, but, oh, he hasn't done that. He's gone for something a little bit risky. I have to be honest. I don't think that's a good move. Queen to e5 now looks like it forces c3. Yes, he's gone for c3. And now... It looks like, looks like I can, can I sacrifice? Must be extremely close to working the sacrifice. Well, let's try it. Rook takes c3. And I can pre-move queen takes c3. Yes. These small blessings on a day like today. All right. I'm not sure if I've done this the best. My opponent deep in thought. He's got a difficult situation. <laughs> Running a bit short of time. Lorne Kidbote here. He can take it. The question is whether he'll be able to survive against the raging attack. He's also got Rook E1 as a possibility. I'm not convinced that that's a good move, but it's definitely on the cards as well. No times. Gone for bishop c2. Bishop c2, though, definitely not a good move because suddenly the second bishop is going to come into the attack. And after king to c1, queen a1 is mate. So I'm back to 50% in banter blitz. Not my best start, I have to be honest. Um... But uh, there's an opportunity there for uh, Lord Kimbote to learn a bit of this theory, this move for black there, 9d5. It is possible to take the pawn, but you have to know a lot of theory for white. Probably best, I would advise, just taking on c6 the way that you did and then playing the move uh, bishop to d4. That's the main line. So knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop to d4. I believe that's move 11 for white, although I can't quite remember. That's what I would go and check out uh, in case you're interested in learning a bit about the theory of that opening. Uh, meanwhile, we are back on again. This time it's uh, Pathfinder 7, Pathfinder V11. Sounds like a reference to a sci-fi movie and or series that I should know. But I have to be honest, I don't, which is a bit uh, disappointing. But uh, anyway... Uh, I decided to go for the wing gambit, something a little bit different. You don't see it very often, 2b4 against the Sicilian. Wing gambit, there's also the delayed wing gambit, which is you play knight f3, and then on the third move, pretty much no matter what they do, you play b4. It's also quite interesting. You can also play it against the French, of all things. It goes e4, e6, knight f3, d5, and then white plays e5 and meets c5 with b4. I actually played it. In a tournament in Greece a couple of weeks ago um, in Ikaria. It was Smerden versus uh, Pedersen, my uh, Danish opponent. If you're interested in seeing how that one works, you can look it up. Um, see if you can find that game from the Ikarios, uh, sorry, Icaros Open in Ikaria. It's very confusing. In Greece from two weeks 
go. But uh, the Wing Gambit, quite versatile. It's possible to develop an entire repertoire against the Sicilian and against the French on the basis of this B4 move, which is interesting. It's considered unsound by theory. I disagree. And actually, Correspondence Chess has come around to the viewpoint now that it's probably sound in terms of being good enough for a draw. And given that chess is probably a draw anyway, that's good enough for most people. Okay, enough jibber-jabber from me. Let's get back into the chess. My opponent now has played a move I did not expect. Knight to f6 looks incredibly dubious to me. Let's see whether or not... I mean, the move I want to play is clearly knight takes e5. I'm not entirely sure whether I should, though. I should really think about this. But uh, thinking has not worked for me today, so I'm just going to take it, see what happens. I'm a little worried about bishop takes b5 here, but... Sorry, maybe then I might be able to play rook e1. The bishop moves back somewhere. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't know whether this is working for me or not. In any case, my opponent has sort of let me off the hook a little bit there. Uh, it gives me another chance here to play... Well, give me a chance to play a number of different things here. I'm really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the bishops. When I say take the bishops, I mean by taking one bishop, I myself claim the bishop pair. That's where the plural bishops come from. Oh me, with my fancy terminology. I hope the internet's going all right for you guys. That's, I mean, the video feed. Again, if it's not, I apologize. I promise in future I'll have better internet. Please let me know. Someone says, is Smurfo uh, playing on the moon? I think that may be in reference to a bad internet connection. I apologize if that's the case. Um, but I promise any words that you miss, I'm not saying anything particularly interesting. Um, all right, so now the real question is whether or not uh, my opponent's going to be able to castle because I've won back the pawn. Typically, if that happens in the wing game, then things are going very well because you get this lead in development. So if you can then couple that with the win of material, you're looking pretty peachy. My opponent's done something I didn't expect and castle there because I deliberately tried to prevent it. Let's see uh, whether or not my opponent's got an answer to this idea of bishop a3 followed by d4. It looks Bad, bad, bad for black. So let's see what he can come up with. <laughs> Flato68 says, Smurfo seems like a really nice bloke. Very nice thing to say. You're very gracious after smashing me. <laughs> Should talk to Leon to see whether you can claim some uh, free prize from that game. I think you deserve it. First game up, winning that. So congratulations again to Flano 68 just to recap I'm one from two having lost my first game winning my second in a theoretical dragon against Lord Kimbote and now winning a third against Pathfinder V11 or Pathfinder 7 um, sorry if the screen moves around a bit that's because I'm currently balancing the laptop on my knees I'm doing that because I can't reach the desk because just to recap I've got a busted ankle it's all happening. Busted ankle like I was busted in the first game. Deep fought from India. We've played before, I believe. Deep fought and I have played a couple of times uh, in previous band of blitzes. Uh, I believe that I have a pretty good record against Deep for What's happening with my lag? I hope this lag is not extending to the video as well. I'm sorry about this, guys. Look at this. I must be lagging bad. I'm sorry. I can't help it, unfortunately. Probably because my neighbors upstairs are downloading movies. Can you believe it? Sharing an internet connection with neighbors in this day and age, you know, 2015. I tell you what, I will not stand for it anymore. Next month, I get my own. Uh, what was I talking about? Chess. Let's get back to the chess. Um, Right on. I didn't expect that move already. I'm really not doing very well predicting my opponent's moves today. I'll tell you what I did, I did not predict. My opponent checked in one move. That was what I did not predict. Um, okay. I'm down time, and I have a feeling that is somewhat lag-related. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. 
good. At least I've got premium. A bit more out of this. Uh, all right, let's talk a bit of chess here. I have adopted a uh, slightly unorthodox system. I'm playing what's known as now. I don't know. I think it's called the English thing. Was a French guy, Christian Bauer, who actually pioneered it. Black twenty six hundred French and won a lot of really nice games. But uh, uh, it was also, uh, I guess originally it was made famous by English grandmasters, including the late Tony Miles, um, who famously beat Anatoly Karpov by playing 1A6. And also John Spielman, grandmaster from England, still playing, very strong player. Uh, so I think that's why it's called the English opening. My chess history is uh, not so good. Um Man, I really, really don't know what I'm doing in this opening. I should have learned some theory. Uh, what I really want to do is swap off the queens because I don't like the way this game is going. I should really change the tempo of the comp somehow. Maybe queen e8 will do that. Try that. Yeah, the, the English opening is quite tricky because it immediately takes your opponent out of and you can play where they play one d4, e4, and one knight f3. Play against all these moves. Um, it's even possible to play it against one e4, as I uh, recently tried against Nakamura with chess, would you believe? Uh, which surprised me, but uh, it's usually not to be recommended that way. This looks like I should be able to launch a bit of an attack, but I can't quite find a way to make it work. I have this real problem piece. This knight on b8 is a bit... I really don't like him, but I don't know where he should go either. He's causing me some consternation. All right, I might as well just get him out because I don't know what to do with him, and I'm starting to get a bit low on the clock, actually. That was exactly the move I was afraid of that he's played there. d5. And now... If he follows it up with knight d4, I could be in a bit of bother, actually. I'm not, I really haven't done this very well. Knight d4 looks quite strong, actually. What am I going to do about that? Uh, fortunately for me, he's gone for a somewhat more passive op option. And, uh,. Might be quite passive because it allows me to sneak in this move f4, which I guess my opponent probably missed. And now knight g6. Uh, yeah. I'm still not super happy with my position, and I'm running very low on time. And my nose is starting to run as well. Man, it's all it's all happening for me tonight. I tell you what. All right. No excuses. No guts, no glory. F3. Yeah, I guess that was to be expected to some extent. But then E5. And Queen E7. I'm starting to get a little bit of something happening here for me. Oh, if I get the queens off. Yeah, I'm not so disappointed about this. Yeah, you know, I'm going to put a knight on d6. This may not be so... Oh, I missed that move, though. I missed that one. That was a good move. That was a good move. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I should have seen that one coming. Oh, I should have stopped that one. That's a real shame. I think I lost any chances I had of an advantage there. Yeah, silly, silly stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I've messed this up now. This is not looking good. Low on time, bad position. It's not gone the way I wanted it to. I really needed to be working on that C4 pawn, but now there's no access Ow, oh, and my ankle really hurts. Anyway, that's uh, 
That's not for discussion. Uh, Whoa, well, this position's getting super blocked up, actually. I don't really like it, this blocked up. It's still running a bit low on time. I want to keep a bit more play in this position if I can. Super blocked this position. Super weird to have a position that blocked. Anyway, I'm going to swing my other rook across. Put some pressure on uh, the F3 pawn if I can. Should have probably moved my king out of that pin, but uh, I didn't. And I definitely should have because now I've got to pop back because of this bishop e7 move. It wasn't great play. And my, no <laughs> my nose is running like crazy. Anyway. It's hard to really see how I can make anything in this position. I mean, it doesn't look like there's really much going on here. Looks like it's heading towards a draw. Should be a great result from deep forward. I don't think deep forward's um, scored any points against him before. So this will be this will be nice if he can pull it off. Uh, running really low on time. I'm going to chuck my knight into f4. Not so happy with that move either. But anyway, let's get at least one pair of rooks off the board. I've got to say. I'm not so unhappy with how this has turned out. I've got, I think I've got decent, oh, oof, that was a bad move, but he's let me off. Let me get away with that. I really didn't deserve to get away with that. He had rook g6 there he could have played, and he didn't. Now I'm just going to run forward. So I think I'm going to sneak away with a win in this game, but... I don't think that I really deserved it, to be honest. But I'll take what I can get. Now, it uh, should be pretty easy to win this one from here. My poor opponent has played extremely well, but uh, nothing left in the position now, unfortunately, for him. Well, stranger things have happened, but probably not today. And now Rook G2, that'll be the end. Once those Rooks come off. But I really struggled in that game. Oh, I tell you what, that was not at all convincing. Well played, Deep Ford. I think that's the, definitely the best game we've played against each other. Oh, and it's just popped up that you offered me a draw. Well, I didn't see that inside. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Second Indian, Prepara. Uh, now, I just spoke about the wing gambit against the French, so let's try it out, actually. Excuse my nose. I'm sorry about this. I don't know what's, um, what's causing it. So here we go. So this is the wing gambit I was telling you about against the French. It's also just called the wing gambit. They've just given it the same name against both openings, even though it's uh, they're reasonably different systems. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to give this one a go, see how it works. Usually that knight doesn't find a very safe home uh, when it goes traveling, which is what his knight's doing now. Um, but let's let's find out whether he can get away with it. Usually I've got some move like G4 that causes some problems. I don't know whether it's a good move here or not, but uh, I'm quite tempted to play G4, actually. I think I will. I think I will give G4 a go. He'll put the knight on H4. That's a typical French idea. But uh, after takes, takes... There's a couple of ways now that I can take. Probably I'll just take with the knight here. 
and uh, try and follow up with F4 in the future. I think I've got a reasonable compensation. Maybe nothing too special, but... Oh, stupid nose, I tell you. Um, the important, really important thing to note here is that the extra pawn is, is this A pawn. You've got these A and B pawns. They're not really playing a big role in the game. So usually, even if things go wrong, it's very difficult for Black to uh, convert his extra material. Okay, that's... Uh, I guess he's, he's moving in for a little cheapo, but the cheapo doesn't worry me too much. The idea was to play knight takes d4, but I'll just shuffle my king out of the way, which was a move I was going to play anyway at some point, so that hasn't worried me too much. Uh, I really want to go f5. It's possible that I can go f5 on the next move, even. I have a feeling my opponent, like many people when they first see this, they, they seem to be very scared to castle kingside. In actual fact, there's a surprising number of defensive resources at your disposal if you're black and you castle here. So you shouldn't be too worried about this. Um, so it might have been an idea to actually try it out. But anyway, uh, he hasn't. And now it's a bit of a, bit of a problem. Is he really going to go queenside? It seems like a risky decision to go queenside. So... We'll see. I'm going to bring the knight into b5, and now I'm going to start to roll the pawns forward. a6 is what he's thinking about, but can he really get away with a6? I'm not so sure. Okay, so knight d6. Now I've, again, the way in the terminology that I used before, I've claimed the bishop pair. Now I've claimed the two bishops. And now, well, I feel pretty good about about my position. I don't know where Black's going to castle. I'm not sure he knows where he's going to castle either. I don't know what's going to stop my nose either. Okay. F6 seems the obvious move here, so I'm going to try it. Queen takes seems to... Well... Pawn takes G6, all these options... We'll see what Preparer does before I say any more. Oh, my ankle is starting to swell through its strapping, in case you wanted to know an update on my ankle situation. Gone for E5. Wow, wow, wow. E5. Allowing me to take pawns left, right, and center. I don't know if that was a good move, but could be. Allows me huge double bishop sacrifice, but don't know if that's working either. Is it? Oh, it's so tempting. So tempting. And you guys will know by now what happens when I get tempted by a nice idea. I usually just do it. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm not sure that it was the way to go. But it's so tempting. Okay. It looks so nice what I've just done. Does it work? We'll soon find out. What do I sacrifice? Just a piece. Just a piece. This looks like a real wing gamut game. Now, rook f6, very important move. Uh, although probably bishop g5 is also winning. But rook f6 threatens queen g5 check. And I can't see a way to stop it. I can only see giving up the queen, but that's just game over. So I think this has worked. This is a nice wing attack game, actually. I don't often get to play nice wing attack games, but I think this one has worked. Knight goes into e7, but after I take it, queen g5 and rook h6. His mate and Dave claims a victory in the wing gambit. I hope this has inspired you guys to try it out. I really think it's worth more 
uh, worth more attention than it's given these days. All right, so thanks for the game preparer and for also giving me a chance to demonstrate the wing gambit against the French. That's two wing gambits we've had, which is kind of exciting that I've gambiteered like this. Um, all right. Oh, I've been given white again. How come I'm getting so many whites? This is kind of, kind of nice. Sol de Fuego. Oh, yeah, let's play another wing gambit, actually. Just we'll turn this into a lesson on the wing gambit. Sol de Fuego isn't... I think Fuego means uh, fire, does it? Does Fuego mean fire in, in Spanish? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what solder means. Anyway, I've just been told that it is indeed fire, but... Uh, yeah, solder, I don't know. Okay, but anyway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Son of the fire. Thanks for that. Um, I probably should have been able to work that out, to be honest. I'm, I'm not so monolingual that, that I shouldn't have been able to handle that, and yet somehow I couldn't. So, so be it. Um, sol be it. Here we go, another game up uh, against Sol de Fuego, uh, which makes a lot more sense than Sol de Fuego now that I think about it. And it's another wing gambit, although my opponent has done something you probably shouldn't do against the wing gambit, and that is to decline it. Uh, many people get scared off when they decline it, but if you do that, you automatically give white the advantage. Excuse me while I uh, very uh, impolitely sniff away my troubles. Um, yeah, you shouldn't decline the wing gambit because uh, you can see now that my pawn structure, I've got this huge space advantage, uh, generally quite a nice position. It's not the, the way to go. So uh, in general, I would not recommend the approach that my opponent has taken here. Maybe it works out. Who knows? We'll, we'll soon discover, I guess. But uh, I've got a huge space advantage and this pawn on A7 is a bit weak. So that's something to keep, uh, keep in mind. Oh! Unlucky for my opponent. D4 was indirectly defended. Standard motif often from the advanced French, and here I've managed to pull it out in the wing gambit. This is going to be a good day for the wing gambit, even though perhaps not a good day for me, as I'm sure you've gathered from my many complaints on air. Unlucky for my opponent. He's going to try and struggle on for a bit, but it's going to be difficult because all the original problems still remain. That is, the queen side tied up, knight on d8, b8 can't move, rook on a8 tied down, and I've got an extra queen. That's probably the most important thing at this stage. Actually, my last move, knight c3, wasn't so good. I really should have played uh, rook to a3, just going to play rook to h3 and queen h4 and mate on h8, and that would have been the end of the game. But, okay, to be honest, at this stage it doesn't, particularly matter too much. Uh, it's one of the benefits, I guess, of having an extra queen. Uh, okay, so I guess probably the most straightforward manner is to play f3 because if the bishop retreats to the king side, then queen b7 will pick up another piece and that will cause resignation. In fact, it may happen now, but... Not just yet, my opponent going to play a couple more moves, but I think at this point, realizing that another piece is going to fall. Oh, Michael, I just moved it in a way that I guess I really shouldn't have. Oh. <laughs> Luckily for me, this isn't a game I'm going to have to expend too much extra energy on. Otherwise, <sighs> that was super painful. Oh, I'm going to have to jiggle the camera a bit while I readjust this. Sorry about this, guys. Ow. Well, I'm going to win this game, but as you've probably worked out, it hasn't been the most pleasant of experiences. Oh, that really hurt. Anyway, I'm going to have to see a doctor about this. Uh, my opponent playing on, I think it's probably a bit too little too late at this stage. I'm wondering whether there's some cute way that I can finish this off, but probably not, so I'm going to... Just march this pawn down the board. Put it on h6 and made it on g7. I don't think there's much my opponent can do to stop that, unfortunately. Oof. 
Is this the first band of blitz where a GM has visibly winced from actual physical pain? Please tell me if there's been any other GMs who've suffered an injury while on the air. I always like being the first at something, you know. Um, okay. H6, Rook G8, and then the game will end pretty quickly. My opponent, I guess, is really hoping for a miracle now, but uh, no miracle will be forthcoming. And I think it's mate in four. Rook takes g2, rook g8, and he would be able to survive one more move, but he doesn't give that opportunity. So uh, another win for the win game, but thanks for the game, Sol de Fuego. Uh -huh. As the sun goes down, let me try to... <laughs> Do you know I have a big light that I can turn on? But of course, I can't get up to reach it. So uh, you guys are going to have to make do with this. I don't know what it looks like to you guys. It might look a little bit, might look a little bit creepy for all I know. <laughs> but let's just, it's uh, it's the best we can do. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> you can probably see the reflection of my bald head. <laughs> just to add insult to injury, Casey Jones, an Australian. I'm impressed that I'm playing in Australia. And you must be either staying up very late or getting up very early, given what time it must be in Australia right now. So uh, I guess that's something that technically should be on my side. Um, I guess. I don't know. It must be, it must be very late in Australia. Um, But it's good to play another Australian. I guess you were, uh, well, perhaps you were watching the, the cricket. Maybe that's actually why you stayed up. Maybe because you were watching the cricket. That would make sense. That's what I was doing. And I wasn't enjoying it either, Casey. Uh, H6, in case you're wondering, is not a particularly useful move. I just put it in there basically to confuse my opponent. But I'm almost certainly... It's the case that it's not a uh, useful move. Casey, just using a little bit too much time for a three-minute game, I would say. I would recommend moving a tiny bit faster if I was him. But uh, we'll see how he goes. But he doesn't want to get too far behind on the clock. I am going to... I feel a bit aggressive today. I think it's the, the, <laughs> the shooting slivers of pain that are sparking up my leg as we speak have somehow incited in me this bloodlust that I'm going to play perhaps a bit crazier or maybe I'm just uh, incensed by falling for mate and one in the first game. Either way I'm going to play a little bit riskier than I normally would as you can probably tell by the quality of this game. Uh, there's an opportunity for my opponent there to play knight uh, c4 which would have been quite interesting but uh, he's given it up. Uh, I have to stop it with a move that I didn't really want to play knight d5. Uh, and now, to be honest, my pawn looks a bit, bit ridiculous uh, sitting where it is. He's got F4 coming, so uh, things are looking very, looking very good for me at all at the moment. I don't know what I'm going to do here. This is a, a tough situation. I guess, I guess so now, so now I'm just committed, committed to roll with forwards, but F4 is going to cause me some consternation on the next move. move. I'm guessing that yes, will. Yeah, there, there it is. There it is. There's the There's move. The move. Oh, and the oh, idea is he's going to go in and go five, five, five very quickly. quickly. I got some, I got some, got some serious, serious problems, problems to solve, to solve here. here. If Knight takes E5, I wonder what he'll take with. Yeah, by the way, this is... This is not, this is not a, a, a happy, happy situation, situation for me. For me.
I think I'm going to have to go for what is clearly an unsound pawn sacrifice. Uh, yeah, this is this is a horrible, horrible position. I, I really, I've really messed this up badly now. And now this is an excellent move f5, and I think I'm in a world of pain, as we say. In many ways, as you can probably tell by now, is there any hope for me here? I don't see any hope in this position. Of what's my time situation? Not good. All right, I'll try ninety four, but I'm in all sorts of trouble here. This game looks close to lost, actually. I think I'm lost. Yeah, this looks this looks extremely bad. It's going to be a big win by Casey Jones, actually. I don't think I've been beaten by a fellow Aussie on here. Uh, all right, it's given me a tiny little sliver of hope here, although the position still looks very bad. I think, no, I must be lost here. I think I can see a win for my opponent, which is never a good sign. This is this is about to be game over. A couple more moves, but uh, I'm pretty sure that I can already call it quits. Let's see whether or not I can find some desperate swindle or something, but I think I probably will have to resign very soon. That's an excellent move. And that should be enough to do it. I can't see any way out of this now. That's game over. Excellent play by my opponent, I have to say. Didn't even give me any hope. Just waiting for the big finish now. I won't tell you what it is, but I'm sure my opponent has seen it. There we go. Rook d6. Well, I don't know if I would have played it immediately there. But it's probably also winning. It does give me a tiny little chance, but it's still winning. There was a win immediately by playing bishop takes c6, but my opponent didn't, which was very nice of him, just to give me a last little sniff, and I'm going to hold on for as long as I can, but... Not much happening here for me, unfortunately. I think uh, that's going to be it as well. Is there anything I can do? No time, no nothing here. Can't see a single move to keep me in this. Oh yeah, that's a good move. Just to really put the boot in. And mate's in two. There we go. Great win, Casey Jones. That's a second victory. And that's two down for me. Two losses, one with white and one with black now. This is uh, not turning out to be my finest performance. The worst I've had is two losses. I don't believe I've ever lost three, but I am, <laughs> I am well on track for my worst ever performance. Let's see how we go. Like I said, I've never lost more than two, which in itself is already not a particularly uh, amazing thing to be able to say. So let's see how we go here. Oh, I always forget this. Oh, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. I can't remember. I know I'm supposed to play knight takes e5, but I can never remember this theory. 
it's meant to be knight takes e5, but why? Why is it knight takes e5? I can't remember. I can't remember. But then I really shouldn't have played this opening because I think I'm totally busted actually now. Yes, this is this is bad news. And I'm down on the clock. Oh no, no, no. This is you you guys are not gonna believe this, but on a Tuesday I beat Nakamura in three minute chess. Um and today <laughs> not so much. <laughs> anyway. Uh so be it. Well done, Casey Jones. That was a good game. I don't mind losing to a fellow Aussie. Well, I mean, who am I kidding? I mind losing all the time. But still, it's uh it's it's nice. Nice win. So I've not played what I was supposed to do against the Schleeman, as this opening is known. I was supposed to play on move six, knight takes e5, but there's a whole bunch of theory, and it, I really, I couldn't remember it. So I've, uh, I've opted for, well, I don't know what you would call this. I've opted for some uh, attempts to bluff my way out of things, but it hasn't worked very well for me so far, uh, because I'm, well, now I've gambled at a pawn, but really it's because I, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. So I'm going to try and. Try and bluff my way and see whether we can uh, we can get something out of this position. At least I've chewed back a little bit of time, which is uh, helpful. But I'm going to need a little bit more than just time if I want to get anything out of this game. Yeah, I didn't really have a concrete follow-up to that pawn sacrifice, to be honest. So... Uh, a little bit under the pump now. Mm, this is not good. This is not good at all. What am I doing? I'm in trouble now. I've got back my pawn, but this is, I mean, against the Schleeman of all things, I should be able to at least get a, a equal position, maybe something more, but it hasn't worked for me today. <laughs> oh, yes. I should have kindly asked my girlfriend for some painkillers before the broadcast. That would have been the smart move. Not to worry. Real GM doesn't need painkillers. Yes, he does. Okay, uh, I've got to get these queens off the board because uh, this is starting to hurt me, but I don't think I can do it the way that I initially wanted to do it. Uh, I think, I, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I wanted to play queen g5, but then he's got h6, and if he does h6, then I have to go queen g6, take, take, take. I've got knight in. Yeah, I guess I have to try it. I have no choice. Will he do h6, or will he just take on e3? That's the question. I think he'll play h6. He feels like an h6 sort of guy. He's an H6 sort of guy, all right. Okay, so I've popped another pawn. This is like the third pawn I've lost in one game. Normally, my opponent keeps giving him back to me for some reason that I haven't managed to work out yet. But uh, this one he might decide to hang on to. Anyway, we'll find out. Yeah, I didn't pop a pawn after all because I had this knight f5 move, which I didn't even see myself. Tell you what, I'm not I'm not liking the way that I'm not seeing anything today. Anyway. Um Does that move okay? I guess it was okay. I'm getting a bit 
nervous. I don't usually miss as many things as I've been missing here. Take, take, take. King H. H is going to bring his knight back and then I have a check and I don't think I can get away with that. Mm. It's just not working for me today. Things are just not gelling. Oh. When your opponent falls for maiden one, you start to reconsider your luck. Thank you, Shafkat. I wasn't really feeling it that game. <laughs> Thanks for... Thanks for letting me back into it there. It was the whole reason I moved my knight, actually, was to not allow you to unpin your knight. Um, although, actually, it turns out you could still have done so with the move knight h7 instead, in which case I think your position would have been absolutely fine. All right. Wow, Tukon, you move quick. How did you manage to move so quickly? That was amazing. The screen came up with your move already on it. That was, that was quite impressive. American Tukon, I'm going to try out this, uh, this opening, this uh, English defense we were talking about before, which it, it sort of it worked okay for me last time, but it was nothing special. It wasn't the sort of thing that really got people cheering from the rafters. I should... Probably, I don't know, learn some theory or something. Uh, I haven't seen this move before. Bishop g5 doesn't mean it's not a good move. It could be a very good move for all I know. Uh, I'm kind of tempted to blast my way through the middle, but generally when I do something like that, things don't work out so well for me. So maybe I'll try and be a bit more restrained... What will I play? Maybe I'll play F6. Why did I play F6? What an ugly move. I immediately regret that decision. Why did I play that? That was a bizarre move. Oh, well. Maybe I'll put it back on F5 and we'll just call that a little faux pas. There we go. F5. Back to normal again. You can probably just castle here. I like the way he's played, actually. Yeah, he has his castle. That's good. Seems to have played a nice game. Nice uh, controlled game so far. Last time I was quite lucky to win the game. I can't remember now who it was against. Was it Deep Fort? I can't remember, but uh, I didn't play uh, with any particular uh, inspiration. But you shouldn't use my games in this English defense as any good reflection on the way to play this. Have a look at the games of Tony Miles, Jonathan Spielman. They really played some impressive chess, and they seem to have a good positional understanding for this stuff. Me, it seems not so much, but those guys, they knew what was what. Okay. Do I have some chances here for some tactical opportunities? Perhaps I can't quite see it working for me. So I guess I won't do anything too fancy. Last time around here I played a move like Queen E8, but it didn't strike me as being particularly successful. Uh, I think I'll just play D6. Oh, oh, I instantly regret that too. Look at this E6 pawn. That's a... He's not so happy anymore. Some move like d5 could really cause me some problems, although maybe I can get away with knight e5. This is... Yeah. I don't like it. I don't like this at all. Quite surprised my opponent took back with the pawn there. I thought the whole idea of putting the knight on e2 and the bishop on d2 was to be able to recapture with a piece on c3. So that's a somewhat unusual recapture. Maybe my opponents are trying to surprise me in the hope that the surprise takes me aback and I jerk my ankle and thus I'm incapacitated from thought for the next 20 seconds. My opponent's probably considering whether the e takes f5, knight takes f5, queen c2 works or not. 
I think I'm actually okay because I'll just play g6 in that position. And then the d4 pawn will be quite weak. So I'm not so worried about that. But on the other hand, something my opponent has to consider is whether or not they can allow me to play f5, f4, which completely blocks up the position. And the bishop on d3 looks a little bit uh, unhappy. And in fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. Or does my opponent have some... Some funky idea that I'm not aware of here. Actually, I have a bit of a funky idea here that I might try. So h6. I guess my opponent should... Wait, am I lagging again? What's going on? Why why have the clocks frozen? Oh, maybe my opponent was lagging. That makes an unexpected yet welcome change. Uh, now, I'm tempted just to power forward here, but I'm not entirely sure that's the way to go. I think... I think I'm just going to block things up. I'm going to play f4 and really block things up. Now, I expect my opponent will try and break with c5. That seems to be the obvious way to uh, deal with those doubled pawns. Probably the best way to do it is to play first... Ooh, I was going to say the best way to do it is to play first uh, bishop to f2. <laughs> I'd really like a tissue, but I can't reach it because I can't move my leg. <laughs> it's a bit sad, really. Uh, okay, so I'm going to... I think I'm going to try and swap everything off, actually. Yeah, queen e8. I suspect my opponent will be pretty happy to swap off uh, the queens. But it's also good news for me because it's the, the pawns are quite weak, these doubled uh, c-pawns. And I can play moves like, well, as I'm going to play here, bishop a6. And that c-pawn looks pretty weak. There is rook b4. Try and keep things together. But it shouldn't worry me too much. I could, could open things up with c5 here. Takes, that takes rook across. Oof. Oof, since when did I start running out of time? I don't know where that came from. But anyway, I'm a bit concerned now because I wasn't low on time before, and now I really am. I'm going to try and move a bit faster now. My opponent, difficult decision here. Giving me the C5 square. That's uh, not ideal. Probably I can take... I hope I can take... I haven't calculated, but it feels like I can take there. And that should just be a clear pawn with an excellent position. This shouldn't be too difficult to wrap up now, if I'm lucky. Still, maybe it's only one pawn. I've got to be careful of my clock, but it's a very fast A pawn. Very fast. Knight goes in. That's a good square. B2, what a good square. I like that one. Now I've just got to get one more piece into the game and it's all over. And that piece is going to be my rook. It's going to come to the D file. And that's going to be the end of the game. Did my opponent resign? Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> it came up on my screen. I thought he resigned. But he didn't. Now, A2. And Rook D1 check. And that pawn will no longer be able to be stopped. 
Tukon has to give up the fight. Ow, 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 ow. On my final move, I moved my ankle. Oh. Whew. I think I've done something really bad to it, guys. All right, Diet Coke. Diet Coke. With an ELO of 23.36. Given the way the others have performed tonight, Diet Coke, you are looking like a good chance here. Let's see how you get on. Diet Coke having a bit of a think about things, but he's definitely the strongest player I've played tonight. I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to play this move. Uh... Knight D2. It's not very well known. Uh, actually, I played it because Ian Rogers played it a while ago. Ian Rogers, Grandmaster from Australia, retired a few years ago. Probably our greatest ever chess player. Um, with the possible exception of Walter Brown. But that's always... We're not quite sure whether to call him Australian or not. Ah, oh, and I wasn't supposed to do that. Anyway. Played a bit of a silly move there. Maybe it was very silly, in fact. Anyway, we'll find out. Oh, 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 oh that hurt. Um, but, 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 what was I... What was I about to say? I um, can't remember what I was saying now. Ah, yes, Ian Rogers. But... Uh, Hikaru Nakamura actually played it recently, so I played it uh, in a Bundesliga game and it got a tiny bit of coverage because I beat a reasonably strong GM with it. And then, uh, oh man, I knew I played the wrong move and now it has become abundantly clear that I did in fact play the wrong move and now I've just popped a pawn. Damn it. Man, I was feeling really good about this game. Finally, I was feeling like things were working out for me. Now I'm just a pawn down, crappy position. Oops, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that on ICC. Well, too late now. Um, yeah, so Hikaru, I think he saw me play it, or at least he saw a copy of the game, and so he gave it a go against Anish Giri, um, and Anish sort of knew the theory because he'd seen my game as well, and so I'd analyzed it and said, wow, it's just a draw, nothing special. So the guys agreed to draw, but it was kind of flattering to see it played out. Anyway, this is not... This is terrible. I just lost a pawn and I gave him a good night. This is... I'm going to stop talking. Um, I'll tell you what, Hikaru didn't copy me because I played it like this. This was not the way to go. Uh, I have a good bishop, but... Well, he has a pawn. Okay. I'm going to try and focus here. See if I can't get some compensation going. There are at least some practical problems for Diet Coke here to work out. Oh, man, I should have totally pre-moved that reply. I don't know why I didn't. That's a pretty good way to play things, I think, actually. Uh, I'm going to take the opportunity. Shall I take the opportunity to play Rook D1? I think that's probably a good idea. Queen. Oh, I totally shouldn't have taken that opportunity. <laughs> damn it, damn it, damn it. Why did you do that, Dave? Why? 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 This day, this day, I tell you what, H6. Wow, 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 wow. Very tempted to sacrifice. I got no time to work it out, but very tempted. Very tempted. Really want to sacrifice. Is that so bad that I really want to sacrifice? Come on. Oh, I don't think it's any good. I don't think it's any good. I'm going to do it. I can't help myself. It doesn't feel like it's enough. 
unfortunately, but it's just been that sort of day. Who knows? Maybe I can make something out of it. Uh, 9f6 or queen h5? Tough decision here. I think 9f6. This is not working. What was I thinking? Oh, man, this was so stupid. This is not going to work. Ah. Anyway. So be it. Rook d8. That was the problem with this whole uh, grand idea that I had. That was the big problem. And now, really nothing, I think. Okay. <sighs> sorry about the, <laughs> the sniffing. And sorry about the complaining and so forth. Yeah, I think yeah, there's nothing here. Maybe I can... Maybe I can take a draw. It's a bit. It's a bit cowardly to take this draw. I don't really want to take it. F four maybe here or what? F four G three F four G three F four G three F four. Not sure which was the best move there. Should be able to steal a draw at least. Oops. Should have played G3. <laughs> uh, dear, oh dear. My opponent just running away from me here. Oh, let's play for the win. Screw it. I've just had, like I said, that sort of day. Let's play for the win. Can't be the right move, but let's do it. What's going on with this lag today, guys? Is it me? Or what? Where it's coming from? Ooh, it's another pawn at least. I'll definitely take another pawn if it's on offer. Uh, nah, maybe here. I don't know. He really wants a queen swap, doesn't he? I don't particularly want a queen swap, but maybe I can do it. It's a lot of pawns at least. Oh, ow, 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 my stupid friggin' ankle. It's another pawn. I don't know why he gave me that one. That one seems somehow kind of more useful than the rest. Hey! Hey, computer! Computer! What? Don't freeze on me, computer. Don't freeze on me now of all moments. Come on, computer. Stick with me. We've come this far. There we go. Come on, computer. <laughs> come on, computer. Oh, my computer is dying on me here. This lag is really terrible.
Yeah, shall we call it a draw? Diet Coke, how do I offer a draw on this? Draw. Why are you you're not taking the draw? I offered you a draw. It's a bit strange. Oh well. Maybe you didn't see my draw offers either. Wow, what an exciting game. That was, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was somewhat painful physically on this end, but that was an entertaining game. I like the way that you played actually, Dyko. I found some nice resources there. I have a feeling at some point that end game must be very close to losing for you, but uh, you found your way back, so well done about that. Well done on taking the draw. So I've lost two, drawn one. Uh, Crapzilla. Crapzilla, I cannot believe they allowed that name as an ICC handle. <laughs> it's quite, quite impressive you managed to sneak that in. Uh, all right, we're going to try the same thing as before. Ah, uh, don't play Queenie 1. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do now. I can't remember. Is it E6? I don't remember. I guess it's not E6 if you're thinking about things. <laughs> oh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do now. E5, take, 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 take. I don't remember anything. Oh, my God, that was a terrible move. Oh, wow. What was I thinking? I did, I did, oh, whoa, 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 we were. That was a terrible move. I'm playing a bad line, a move behind. I'm such an idiot. I don't know what is going on with me today. E6 and then E5? Really? What are I like 6? Can't work out whether it's my computer freezing or whether it's the server. Something bad is definitely happening and I'm not enjoying losing either. This is oh, this is awful position. I think maybe I'm almost, um, I might be, I might actually be lost on move 14. I might actually be lost. I'm not joking, is it? I mean, usually if you waste a temple on the dragon, that's it. This has not been my day. Crapzilla having a think, and I can perfectly understand why they are confused by my play. Am I just getting mated? That is the question. Am I just getting mated? Could be. Could be. All right, F5. I got to mix things up here. System not going well. Got to mix things up. Not so sure about that move, but you know, this should actually be my move in this position. If I hadn't have messed that thing up with the move order, and then the position would be. Perhaps playable. As it stands, however, I don't think it is at all. I think it's anything but playable. Especially after that last move. Because I gotta play Oh my god. I gotta play King F seven. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Maybe I can hold on. This must be lost. It must be. I can't move anything. Uh, 
Oh, 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 I can see a win for White. I can see a win, and that wasn't it, but I could see a win. Maybe that's also winning. Is it also winning? Eh. Somehow it doesn't feel like this is the win. Takes, takes, takes. Maybe I can put my queen here. Hold on a bit more. Rook H7, is that winning? Maybe not. Mm. This is bad news. He's probably thinking whether whether or not Rook H7 wins. Oh, he's gone for it. He's gone for it. It might win, you know. I'm going to have to try this craziness. I might just lose here on the spot. Let's see, bishop takes e6, king takes e6, rook takes g7. Does it win? I don't know. Oh, I totally missed rook g7 check. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I totally missed that move. I don't know how. Oh my god, oh my god, what a disaster. What an absolute disaster. My opponent is uh, thinking about things, but... It's all over. At least there's not much time. Must be completely winning. Oh, it's a bit unexpected. Oh, jeez, I missed that move as well. Oh, my God, I missed everything. I've missed everything. Picks up a rook as well. Oh, my God. Huh. I don't think I've really got any swindling chances here, but I'll try my very best. Somehow my opponent is kind of let me back into this a little bit. Probably a little bit more than they imagine they would. Still must be completely winning. But it's kind of making it difficult for himself here. Is that move okay? Oh yeah, it's okay. Of course it's okay. Although, this is quite extraordinary. Oh, my opponent lost on time. Oh, Crabzilla. Oh, Crabzilla. I'm sorry. I feel bad about that. You, oh, if it makes you feel any better, I'm in a bit of pain as a result. But, uh, ow. But you played uh, really well. I think 
well, okay. You don't need me to tell you. You had a, a bunch of wins. You deserved the win. I'm. Um, thanks for the game. I'm. I'm sorry that it should end this way. Uh, Muhits from Turkey. Next up. Oh, wow. I mean, shock after that one. What a game. I. I. I literally feel guilty for taking that point. I feel so guilty. I don't know what to play here. I'll play this, but... Oh, no, that's not the right move. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But I definitely did not deserve uh, anything from that game. Now I'm going to try and play something as cool and calm as possible because I can't deal with the stress on my poor heart and my poor leg. So I'm going to play nice and safe in this game. Nothing special, nothing fancy. Poor guy. Whew. Oh, I don't get to play tired, Dad? Oh, it's not a banter blitz if I don't play tired, Dad. I always play tired, Dad. I thought that was like a part of the contract. Oh, it's a shame. A shame you couldn't make it. Oof. <laughs> if anyone knows any good uh, sprained ankle remedies, please let me know. I'm playing nice and simple and controlled this game. We'll hit. You're not going to get Crazy Dave on today. No, no, no. We're putting him to bed after his last display. Uh, although I am going to play G4 at least. It's hard to believe that my attack is in any way dangerous, though. It's probably all smokes and mirrors. I can't imagine that I've got enough firepower for this attack to break through. But we'll try see whether or not we can at least uh, scare him in some way. Uh, C5 is not a bad move, actually. I might have to drop my queen back to D2. Yeah, it's also not a bad move. My opponent's playing quite reasonably. The question remains, though, whether that bishop should be there, because if knight D5 comes, the bishop on C4 will be a little bit stranded. So, yeah, for example, I have the opportunity now if I want to do it, but I'm not sure. Let's see where this bishop's going to go. Ow, ow, ow. It's extremely sore. <laughs> uh... I think I might be able to just rock on with g5 here. Let's try that out, see if it works. Takes, takes. Where's that knight going to go? Maybe to h7, and then knight d5. I think my opponent's in some trouble here, actually, because knight d5 is coming now, can't be stopped. The queen's not going to have a good place to go. Because c8 and c6 will both allow knight e7 check, and queen d7 is going to allow knight b6. So the queen's have to, going to have to go back to b8, and that just doesn't smell right. I have a feeling this attack is actually going to bust through. I know I promised that I was going to play nice and safe and simple, but uh, it's, like it's not going to turn out that way. Now, there's really no good square for the queen once knight d5 happens, which means that there's no good square for the knight on f6. He's gone to e8. That's as good a choice as any, I suppose. And now the question is, is he going to play queen b8 or is he going to go to d7? I, because I was about to say that maybe sacrificing the exchange is actually, is actually best here. To be honest, I don't really want to take it. I'm more tempted about moves like g6. In fact, I think in the spirit of today, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to play g6. 
Now, pawn takes g6, queen g5 is probably game over. So that only leaves f6 as an option. But then queen f4 and queen h4 looks close to mating. So it's a tough situation for my opponent. Actually, I think it's probably hopeless, I think. I think Mohit's done. He's gone for f6. So queen f4, followed by queen h4. I think e8, it turns out. I said it was as good a place as any, but if I take it back now, I think it's probably wasn't the best square. Bishop c6 seems like an option here. But after queen h4, bishop takes d5. It's uh, it's mates in four, I think. Let's see if that happens. Oh, ah, it's bad that it's uh, hurting and it's immobile. He's found a way, actually. He's found a way not to get mated, uh, which is quite impressive because I thought he was completely done for. But he's found a way out, which is very impressive. Now. Where's the pretty win is what I want to know. I think it's like this. I think it's e5, d takes e5, and then rook takes e5. I think that's the pretty win. If queen takes e5, queen h8 is mate. Doesn't leave many options. Queen g8 seems to be the only move. But that comes with its own set of problems, of course. He's gone for queen g8. And now there's a couple of wins available. Uh, yeah, I really have my pick of the wins now, I guess. Knight e7 wins. I think knight takes f6 is also winning. Knight takes f6 is kind of the most brutal move in a way. But there's just something, there's just something about knight e7 which is just a little bit... Just a little bit cute. I think I'm going to go for cuteness just for a change. And the real cute point, I'll show you, if he plays rook d4, I think that's what's going to happen. He's going to go rook check and then probably rook back to d4. The cuteness is this move, queen h7. And after queen takes h7, g takes h7, H4, knight, g6 check is the little cute way to finish. Um, picks up the rook on h4, but uh, okay, it's uh, just aesthetics at this point. All right, I'm back on the scoreboard. Uh, it was a reasonably nice game by tonight's standards. I got another white. I have a feeling that Sandro's being nice to me because uh, he feels sorry for me. <laughs> I don't know whether that's true or not, but uh, he's definitely giving me more whites than I'm used to, uh, which I appreciate. I'm going to try now a delayed wing gambit. So we had a, a a normal wings gambit, so to speak, traditional move to Sicilian wings gambit. Um, now I've gone for, and I also had, sorry, a, a French wings gambit, which involves playing two knight f3 against the French, followed by e5 and then b4. It's often called the wing gambit in the advanced variation of the French, which is not entirely accurate, but chess opening names really are. Uh, and now the third variation, I've gone for the delayed Sicilian wing gambit, where you play knight f3 on move 2, and no matter what they play on move 3, you play b4. So uh, we've had all range then of uh, different wing gambits. Uh, again, my opponent... I'm sorry for the shaking of the screen. Again, my opponent declined it on move three by playing a6. And again, I'll go back to that point that I made before, which is that it is almost never a good idea to decline the wing scan, but almost never. Uh, no, wait, I'll just say never. It's never a good idea. Um, just gives your opponent too much play. For for You should at least take the pawn in as your compensation. I think that's that's the main point I want to get across here. And you can see my opponent already struggling uh, in this position. The main problem for him seems to be the fact that uh, he just hasn't developed anything of his king side yet. Maybe he's going to find a way. 
we'll soon find out. And I take C3, I guess, is the idea here. Indeed. And now, very tempting is the move, Bishop G5. Uh, in fact, so tempting that I'm going to play it. Um, I, you, you've seen tonight that I'm playing a little bit more on instinct than I usually will, and that's because my body's feeling a little bit more instinct-driven. And here what I mean is that I've sacrificed a second pawn. Um, if you play bishop takes g5, uh, followed by queen takes d4, but he hasn't done so. Instead, uh, he's played in a way that I didn't exactly expect, but might be quite respectable. You can see here, he's, uh, it doesn't have a pawn for the position. Oh, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> oh, please, Drekov, have a good think about this move. Ah, oh, no, you moved. I didn't want you to move yet. I'm not quite ready for your move. <sighs> okay. Rook C7. My idea by playing rook c7, uh, believe it or not, is actually to vacate the c1 square. I want to play queen c1 followed by queen g5. That's my... Ah, sorry, again, I'm going to have to knock the screen a tiny bit. Ow. Doctors tomorrow for Dave. Um, mm, that was probably the best move, actually. Now... Oh... Maybe it was the worst move. Maybe it was the best move. I can't actually work it out. I wanted to play pawn takes a6, but then you've got this move. Bishop takes f3, and I honestly don't know what's going on. So because I can't work it out, I go back to plan a, which was queen c1, which here has the extra effect that it takes my queen out of the firing line. So this bishop takes f3 motive breaking the pin on uh, the bishop on b7 from the rook on c7. That's no longer on the cards. Now, after queen c1, I threaten queen g5 check, uh, which looks pretty deadly. I also threaten b takes a6, which would have won a piece on the last move, except for this bishop takes f3 uh, trick. So, Drekov's decided to stop the queen side threat by playing a takes b5 and snatching a pawn, but it gives me the chance to go for my king side play with queen g5. Actually, it might be that Drekov missed that move because now he's going into a bit of a think. Uh, seeing as one move gets made in one and one move gets made in four, I guess there's not much point about thinking here. You should just move, and that's what he's done now by playing king back. Now, key question. Can I play rook c1? I certainly can, but my opponent will probably just play the move knight to c6 and then do I have anything any tricks any something ow 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 I don't think I have anything I do however think that I can oh man that one hurt I do think that I can bust through the middle here. So if I play d5 followed by e6, that's giving, that's giving up, up a lot of pawns, I know, but the point, the point is that after, after now, now playing queen g7, g7 this, is the, this is the key point, key point for it. I threatened queen takes d7, d7 as well, as well uh, which before I thought I could have, that was a dominant the dominant someone was sorry, I don't explain, explain what I was, was hit, hit by hand, so, so, so before I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a good move here, now I've got a white and one, which is a very good move. Drakov says, Drakov says, yes, 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 thanks, nice, nice. Four languages, Four languages. Spanish, Spanish, German, German. Russian, Russian, English, 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 Dutch, Dutch. Who am I kidding? Oh, my no one learns Dutch. Dutch. Oh, man. 
I've only a couple of games, games left, left, I believe, which is definitely, definitely good for my ankle. ankle. Um, and also good if I want to maintain my record, but it's much of a record of not having lost more than two in a given session. Gone sailing, where are you gone sailing? Come on, there we go. You've moved. I could try my dragon, but my dragon has not worked out for me very well tonight, although I did manage to claw my way back against Crapzilla in a most remarkable game. Alright. I said no dragon, I went for Scandinavian, you said Black Bardema, I said French, and, and here we are in a French. Why? Not quite sure why you... Now this is a most unusual gambit. I've never seen this gambit before. You did just give me a pawn though. I would assume that you had some... Maybe... It, maybe don't know what's going on. What's going on? Why did why did you give me a pawn? This could be an interesting gambit. I don't exactly know how it works yet, but oh, I'm knocking the screen, aren't I? Sorry about that. It's a uh, symptomatic of my current situation. It's almost a wing gambit. You've given up a pawn on the queen side, but it's not the one you usually give up. Still, it mightn't be so bad. Play bishop g5 here, maybe play h4 at some point. There could be some points to this. Mm, I'm not sure about that move. Also, could be okay, but I'm not so convinced that that's the way to go. I might be tempted to try and swap off a couple of pieces here. Is your knight starting to annoy me a little bit? Yeah, so what's the best way to swap this off? Probably I'll just take it off straight away in castle. And you've managed to swap the dark squared bishops. Generally for white, that's a pretty good positional achievement to have swapped off the dark squared bishops. It doesn't it's not usually worth it for a pawn, but let's see how we go. Ow, ow. Uh, right, I kind of want to get my B pawn rolling, but I should probably develop some pieces first. Oh, you're setting up a battery. Very nice. All right. I'll buy it. Queen A5. Seems to be some more lag, possibly, from my end. At some point, I may have to play F6, which is a typical uh, break for black and the French once uh, the C5 break has been exhausted. Um, but at this stage, I'm more interested in getting my pieces out and Seeing what Gonsang is going to come up with. If I was Gonsang, I would really be tempted to play H4 here, actually. Um, just because he's got to get some counterplay some way. And all my pieces are sort of sitting more on the queen side. But let's see. He's got a couple options. That's another uh, very decent option. Queen coming into the game. Uh, all right, so usually I'd be a bit more scared about this, but today I'm feeling aggressive, so I'm just going to power on. This is indeed the way to play things from Gone Sailing here. The idea of playing Knight G5, that's why I've just brought back one extra piece for reinforcement. And after knight g5, I'll just play the move h6. Still, Gonsaling has created more attacking chances here than I would have expected. But there doesn't seem to be many more forthcoming. At some point, my queen side counterplay should uh, 
should, should win the day. This has definitely been, without a shadow of a doubt, the most difficult band of blitz I've ever carried out. And not just because of the great performances that we've seen tonight. Some great games. Wins by Casey Jones. Uh, a win by... Can you believe it? But I forgot the name. Um, oh, was it... Uh, for, for, uh, I forgot now. For Lure 68? Something like this. For Lure 68. I can't remember now, unfortunately. Casey Jones getting a win. Uh, several close calls, one draw by, now I can't remember the name either, forgive me, and Crapzilla, we can't forget Crapzilla. Oh, I totally missed Rook H4. <laughs> totally missed it. Fortunately, I can play H6, otherwise I'd be totally busted, but I completely missed it. That's one good thing about Banner Blitz. The GMs can't afterwards tell you that you know, in a bluffing manner that, oh, yes, yes, I saw it. Everything was covered, which happens to GMs more often than you might think. Here you get to see the real deal in real time. And you can... Ow! <laughs> you can see all the pains as they happen in real time. No, you can, you can see there that I, I didn't see it at all. Ah. Fortunately, it turns out the position is probably winning for me now because I'm threatening both Knight takes H4 and Pawn takes... C3, Knight G5 is really going for it, but the key issue here is that I don't have to take any of the pieces on that side of the board. I can take the pieces on the other side of the board. <laughs> yeah, Knight takes F7. It's, a, it's all a nice try, basically, at this point, but it's not going to be enough. And that queen that's been sitting out on A5 finally becomes good because she's about to play queen takes E1 check. And there's no way through. I think, did my opponent resign? No, no, just some lag. Yeah, so I'm, I've made it through by a tempo here, but I got, as you probably noticed, a little bit lucky. I wonder whether I can actually, yeah, let's do this. I can probably get a queen. Yeah, worth resigning at this point because if rook takes queen, then just queen to d2 would be the finishing touch. Wolverine 3, the third of the Wolverines. Ah, I, I told myself that I was going to play d4. Anyway. Um, the last game, I believe... Sorry, I, I planned to play D4 at least once, at least once in this band of Blitz, but uh, I was going to do it then, and I forgot, and now it's the last game. So unfortunately, we're going to see a lot more E4, although we might get another game out of this because it looks like Wolverine 3 might might have Wolverined away. Oh. I was going to make a really bad pun and say I'm on my last legs, but, well, now I have. Unfortunately, it looks like Wolverine has um, missed their opportunity in the queue. That's a shame. So we might see a D4 after all, although I hope if, if, any, if you've taken anything out of tonight, you might have enjoyed these, um, these wing gambits that we've looked at. Because we got to see the whole trifecta of... Sorry for knocking the screen. The whole trifecta of different wing gambits. The uh, immediate wing gambit against the Sicilian, the delayed wing gambit, and also the wing gambit against the French. So um, I actually had pretty good success with the wing gambits of all things. Um, but uh, uh, they're worth checking out because it's an opening that's worth playing in the future. In fact, I will play E4 in maybe it's the last game against Taiyan, who... Appears to also not be online. 
This is a bit of a, a strange way to finish. What's going on? It was Flaneur 68 who won the first game, by the way. Oh, there we go. Hang on, back. And uh, I'm not going to get the chance to play another wing game, but I will get the chance to play the line that didn't work out particularly well when I played it against, who was it now? Diet Coke? Was it Diet Coke? I think it was Diet Coke. Uh, so I got to try out something uh, a little bit different this time. It's still an Italian game. Uh, as this opening is called. Good old Italian game. Uh, generally speaking, it seemed to be quite an acceptable opening for Black. Uh, White gets an impressive center for a little while, but it's not such a big deal. Bishop G4 is a good move. Uh, I can kick it, at least for one move. without having to fear too much. Now, if knight f6, I have a problem with my d4 pawn. I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do about that. What am I going to do about that? I guess I could... Uh, kind of... kind of got myself a little bit tied up here, actually. Because I have to play a move now that I don't really want to do. Generally, what White wants to do is maintain this center with e4 and d4 for as long as possible. But here, because I played this sloppy move, knight c3 and move 7, really in the spirit of uh, today's band of blitz, I find myself in a situation where I've had to push one of the pawns forward. The problem with that is it usually gives a powerful e5 square uh, to the black pieces. Uh, in this case, also the d4 square, because I really messed up. Um, and it, it brings the bishop on b6 back to life. So, uh, all in all, it's not something you ideally want to do. You might see in some of the other e4, e5 games that we've had that I've tried generally not to do that um, and allow black to swap it off with a move like c5 or e5 or something. Here, that didn't work out for me, and uh, while I have uh, managed to obtain the two bishops, which is always nice, uh, I'm not entirely happy with the way this opening's gone. Uh, so, we'll see. There is some serious lag happening in this game. I don't understand what's going on. Uh, anyway, nothing that I can do anything about from this end. Also some serious sniffling. All right. I've had to play another move there, F3, which I also didn't really want to play. So my opponent is causing me to play moves that I don't want to play, which is generally a good thing. Uh, but on the other hand, I have been able to get in this uh, F4 push, which is something that's generally quite nice. So I can't complain too much with the results of the opening. And I am going to get to castle now, which is nice. Oh, but I can't castle because of this move. He finds the move that is going to cause me more headaches today. More and more and more headaches. Can I play E5? Do I even want to play E5? Probably have to play e5 now. It looks a bit risky to me. That's not what I wanted to play. I wanted to keep control of the position, but none of my games today have really featured too much in the way of control. So pawn takes e5, pawn takes e5, knight e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and then I have a problem. I want to play bishop check, then I can get a second bishop check in, but I can't castle either way because of knight f2. Oh, but my opponent has given me a gift, almost given me a gift. I thought he'd given me a gift, but he hasn't. Has he? I'm not sure. Before, 
Knight's got to go back. And then what? Maybe bishop b5, e6. What's, what's going on? e6. My nose is going crazy. My ankle is hurting. Last game. Let's make it a good one. All right, e6. My center is totally self destructive Um, basically, a super committal move. I wanted to keep my pawns on e4 and d4. Wasn't happy when one went to d5, let alone d5 and e5. And now I got one on e6, so my center is crumbling. But I have one. You know, I have two advantages. I've got the two bishops, which are good in an open board, and the position is about to get extremely open. And two, my opponent's king is still stuck in the center, and I'm hoping that that's going to work in my favor. Now, let's see whether I can help it to work in my favor. Bishop check doesn't seem to do anything too special. Let's get that knight out of here. Better recapture that back. Why is he th thinking? He's not. I'm lagging. Of course I am. Of course I am. All right. It's very committal play. I don't generally like to play as committally, committedly. I'm sure neither of those are real words. I don't usually like to play in this, uh, this manner. I like to keep control of the position, but that's not worked for me here. And we can see, yeah, this structure, I'm not entirely comfortable with it. There's a bit of a question mark over whether or not I can actually maintain this pawn on e6. Now, if I lose it, I still have decent drawing chances, but I would prefer not to lose it, if at all possible. My opponent should probably strongly consider the move bishop d4 here. Hmm. Hmm. Not so sure about that move. Now I'm tempted just to play g4 and really cement my uh, position, but there is this move bishop d4 to consider. And that's a bit of a problem. Actually, I have a serious problem here. What am I going to do? All right, so let's play... Uh, oh, I'm a bit confused here. Let's bring the king up. That can't be bad. Maybe it's bad. Tough situation. Tough situation to finish. I have a good square now, but I'm not sure how valuable that'll be in the long run. It's given me a chance to take a pawn here. I'm not sure he should have done that, but I'm not going to take it anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. I'm going to run my king up the board. I'm running super short of time. How did that happen? Ah, and I played a horrible move while I was checking out the clock. The king had to go to b3. Of course it had to go to b3. And now, now we have some problems. Now I've given my opponent some serious chances. For free, pretty much. a5 might follow here. It does follow. I've given my opponent some good chances. Still, there's enough material left to win. 
If I can keep that E6 point just a little bit longer. I'm desperately trying to hold on to that pawn. So this is what it's going to come down to, huh? Oh, don't know about that move. It seemed a bit risky in my book. I should have just played rook f1 there. I don't know why I didn't. Rook e5 is tempting, but I think it loses. In any case, my opponent hasn't gone for it. Oh, he's gone for it. He's gone for rook e5. And now, real question mark. I think I'm winning. g5 takes h5. Here's the king and point in game. You can show the kids. I'm going to get there by one move, h5. He's going to play g4. Should play g4. He's just one move too slow because of e7. Very important that I can queen with check. And then h6, the key motif. You see this quite often. And that's going to get me home by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> it was not convincing, but it's going to be enough. A couple of ways to win here, actually, but I'm going to... I might just queen, just for fun. And it's mates in two more moves. And my opponent resigns. Whew, close game, Hyan. I managed to sneak through with a win at the end. I've lost uh, two games tonight and one draw. The two losses were to Flanua68 and to Casey Jones from Australia. And a draw, can't remember now. It might be Diet Coke, I'm not quite sure. Uh, thanks all for listening in tonight, Banner Blitz. I have to apologize for several things, for my play, for my complaining, and for the light, and for the internet connection, for bumping the screen. It wasn't the perfect setup, but what can you do? These were the circumstances we had to deal with. Um, well, I hope you still enjoyed yourselves. Uh, I did enjoy myself, I have to admit, besides the pain. I always enjoy um, being here at Banner Blitz. Uh, please join us for... Uh, further events coming. The August calendar will be posted pretty soon, I imagine, so um, look out for that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time in hopefully slightly different conditions. Thanks all for playing. Congratulations to the winners. I've been Grandmaster David Smerton, your host and player for Banner Blitz tonight. See you later.